Yep. GeoServer Feature Frenzy. Shall we? We shall. OK, so the last presentation talked about what's new. Now we are going to talk about what, whatever you can do with GeoServer, which is lots of stuff. It's a 20 minutes talk, and we have like a ton of slides, so we are going to go very fast, like a roller coaster. Are you ready? Three, go, two. Go, let them go three. Three. OK, so we're going to hit you with a 10,000 feet view. Uh, this is a diagram showing more or less what GeoServer can do, all the services, all the inputs, all the outputs, and so on. I could talk 20 minutes over these slides, or, or we can move on and, and uh, see a slide for every topic instead. So many, many of these functionalities are provided by extensions, and we also have community modules. So if you don't see something, if you see something new that you are not used to, it's probably coming from an extension or a community module. Configuration. Well, GeoServer is well known for its uh, user interface. Uh, you can configure whatever you want uh, with it, like uh, layers, uh, um, tile caching, whatnot. Let's go on. And uh, this is very nice for point and clicker people. We have the style editor, which we just discussed, which got a number of improvements. That's all very nice, but just know that you're not limited to point and click. If you have to configure 1,000 layers, what do you do? You point and click your way through them? Hell no. You can use the REST API to automate uh, the configuration. There are libraries uh, doing, um, helping you with, uh, with that. And if you really have to mass configure thousands and thousands of layers, there is the importer that helps you do that. You just throw it at a folder or a database and say, import all, please. And it's going to start over, mm, chew for half an hour, and create all the layers. Uh, if uh, you care about your configuration, uh, just know that there is a backup and restore extension that you can use to backup the configuration and restore it maybe in a different environment with different uh, database connection parameters. They can all be parameterized. Oops. Okay. No, it's working. Vector data sources, well, we, have, we support uh, all the little files, like shapefiles, geopackages, and via OGR, all the bizarre things. SQL, yeah, we do support SQL, PostGIS, Oracle, SQL Server, SAP, MySQL, Teradata, it's there. If it's not there, you can create a plugin for it. We do support curve geometries in a couple of them, Oracle and PostGIS, and they go all the way through GML. If you want to use the full power of your database, you can write your own SQL query, and it's going to be handled as the source of your data. So you can do processing in it if you want. If you're not happy, you can stick parameters into it and then validate them. Otherwise, you open a SQL injection attack vector. So please always validate your uh, parametric SQL views input. And then, yeah, you have a lot of component computational power out of your PostGIS or Oracle database at your fingertips. Say you don't like SQL. OK, no SQL, whatever. We support MongoDB, Apache Solar, and there is an Elasticsearch as well in a separate repository. It's not part of GeoServer, but if you look for the NGA repository, uh, it, they, they do have an Elasticsearch. You want to more? You want to do more? You want to go distributed? You are, you're going to go big uh, uh, on the cloud? Sure. You can use GeoMesa and GeoWave connectors to store your data distributed in the cloud, uh, do distributed processing, and visualize the results in GeoServer. Um, do you want to take a break? You've been talking for a minute. You hit the thing. So uh, in terms of our raster support, we do support GeoTIFF. Uh, it's been around forever. We really like it. Uh, we support ArcGrid. It's been around forever. We really don't like it. Uh, Image Mosaic is combining all your little tiles into one happy, um, into one happy raster image. Uh, and then we also have a fully configured mosaic, so custom schemas, uh, attributes, filtering, sorting, all kinds of things. And we also do support rasters if you happen to have stuffed them into a geo package. If you want to use uh, any of the native libraries, we've got well-tested uh, interactions through GDAL to a wide range of formats, uh, Kakadu to JPEG 2000. Um, on the encoding side, uh, we use libjpeg uh, turbo if you've got it installed to make JPEGs faster. And if you need to uh, go into NetCDF, or sorry, NITF files, uh, we can make use of that library. Maps everywhere. Uh, GeoServer is well known. Uh, we've got lots of examples in our manuals about how to produce basic maps, but you can actually do a lot better. So here's some examples from IGN. This has been actually done using SLD files, probably thousands of lines long. Uh, keep going. 
Um, if you here's some examples uh, of uh, visualizing OSM, this time done with CSS, probably only hundreds of lines long. Well, the, the road one is a thousand line long, but uh, it, it turns in, into a monster when uh, when it becomes a Okay. Um, in terms of map making, we've got wonderful reprojection support, handling the dateline, uh, the edges of UTMs, uh, polar stereographic, and we've got some uh, uh, nice improvements on quality if you're looking at those uh, polar projections. If you only want to play with Mapbox Vector tiles or any of the other tile formats, yes, GeoServer can publish that. Uh, so there's an extension for publishing vector tiles. It's great if you're targeting like uh, mobile devices with high DPI displays. Um, we do offer an integrated tile cache. Uh, so GeoWebCache is how we do this. It's included right inside GeoServer. It speaks a lot of the tile protocols. Um, runs inside GeoServer. Uh, you can configure it as part of the GeoServer uh, configuration UI. It's fully integrated with our security. Um, and it's integrated with our, our changes. So if you make some edits through WFS, the tile cache will automatically truncate those tiles and get them redrawn. In terms of delivering data, uh, WFS and WCS are, are two protocols for like direct access to data. Um, so WFS is your direct vector data, WCS is your direct raster data. CQL stands for constraint query language, common query language, something like that. This is a lightweight filter language, so you don't have to use XML. Uh, eCQL is our own extensions for this, makes it a little uh, bit easier to use. Um, and in GeoServer, CQL can be used to filter raster data to especially deciding which tiles in your mosaic you want to display. Uh, we've been editing GeoServer uh, with GeoServer since 2003. This was the original killer feature. Um, we also do support uh, this concept of application schema. So if you have a fixed data product you need to publish, you can map your data into that uh, data product. Uh, that's very handy for meeting uh, scientific uh, uh, data products or Inspire. Yeah. Um, in terms of complex GML, if uh, that's difficult for you, we do offer very nice complex um, uh, JSON support. So if you are working with complex features, you can pull back uh, JSON. Uh, here's an example of Inspire, since we are in Europe. Process. So in terms of processing, we have an integrated WPS. Many of the WPSs around are standalone. This, uh, the one in GeoServer is integrated. What does it mean? It means that it can talk to the other services that are in, inside GeoServer. It can talk to the local data sources without having to pull data from outside. Uh, it can be used for many small but very useful things, like map, our map store in GeoSolutions, our map store uh, front end, uh, uses it for uh, aggregation processes to build those charts, for example. Uh, it uses it for clipping ship, so you select the area of the data that you want and we cut it and down, let it uh, be downloaded, even if it's large, because WPS supports asynchronous. We use it to build animation of maps as well, but we can also go big instead and use your server as a front end for a computational uh, grid which uh, has t uh, tens of uh, servers doing processing in the back end. Uh, the integration goes forward with rendering transformation, which is uh, the notion of processing and rendering at the same time. So for example, I have a, a digital elevation model and I extract the contour lines on the fly, that's a CSS style doing the uh, transformation and rendering the, the resulting um, contour lines. Uh, we can do uh, map algebra on the fly using GIFO. That's, a, that's an example of extracting an NDVI index out of a 12-band uh, Sentinel-2 raster data set. We just give it the formula and it does the computation and display the results uh, in a single shot. Uh, we can do some fancier stuff, like sometimes you've got thrusters that contain only two bands, which are the U and D components of a wind vector, and then we do, we do the math in SLD. Uh, or in CSS, uh, we extract the pixels as points, turn the, the UMV as attributes, do, do some math, get wind barbs. You can also do heat maps, of course. Uh, so start from uh, point data and get a uh, heat map displayed uh, on the server side, also on the fly. And point clustering, discrete point interpolation using um, barn surfaces and so on. 
If you are enjoy doing styling, uh, GeoServer does support the standards SLD 1.0 and SLD 1.1. Uh, we also have GeoCSS, uh, which is really friendly for web developers and humans. Um, if you're, if you are a human, please don't write the SLD machine readable formats by hand. Uh, have some self-respect. Uh, we also have YSLD, uh, which is a direct one-to-one -one mapping from the SLD XML structures to YAML. Uh, and then we also have some support in a community module for Mapbox uh, uh, styling specification. Um, GeoServer has the ability to convert between some of these formats. So you can take your uh, SLD and you can edit it in, in YSLD and convert it back again. Um, there's limited support for going from SLD to GeoCSS. Yeah. Um, one feature you might not be aware of is you can have an SLD that contains several named styles. So you can have an SLD that has an entire composition of map layers. And if you send that to GeoServer as a SLD parameter in the URL, you'll actually get that entire map drawn together. Um, you can try out that functionality in the style viewer. There's a little toggle that says preview as a uh, style group. And you can actually define a new group in GeoServer just using one of these SLD files. Um, that also works with YSLD and Mapbox styles. That's a really nice way to do a single styling file that controls your data publication in GeoServer and how to draw it on mobile devices. Um, we have a lot of recipes and references and cookbooks and workshops in our user guide on how to get the most out of this stuff. Um, we've got a wide range of little symbols we can use. We've got the standard ones. We've got a bunch of uh, uh, ones um, for wind barbs and different fill patterns and so on. You can also define your own symbols using well-known text or make use of true type fonts. If you are into uh, weather data, uh, GeoServer has uh, well su good support for multidimensional data. Time and elevation uh, dimensions and custom dimensions are available in WMS, WMTS, and WCS so that you can display time varying data and uh, multidimensional data in various ways. Uh, of course, we support uh, NetCDF and GRIB as inputs, but also as outputs. So you can download via WCS your multidimensional data set, keeping it multidimensional and not extracting a GeoTIFF at a time. Uh, it's meteorology re uh, ready, so we have all the styling support needed to make uh, current maps, wind maps, and uh, barometric maps and the like. In terms of security, we have a complete uh, subsystem for authentication and authorization. In terms of authentication, we support a lot of stuff like HTTP basic and digest, cast, LDAP, uh, OAuth, to with uh, binding to uh, Google login, uh, GitHub login, GeoNode, OpenID, uh, and so on. And it's pluggable, so you can add your own if, it, if it's missing. Uh, like my company sometimes ago did Shibolet, for example. In terms of authorization, once we know who you are, we have to decide wh what you can do. Uh, we have the built-in uh, authorization subsystem, which is uh, pretty simple. You just decide who can access which layer uh, with what operation, read, write, or admin. Or we have Geofence as an extension that allows you to do uh, attribute-based filtering, spatial-based filtering, and the like. In terms of reliability, we worked a lot in the, to, to, make it, uh, Im to improve it and make it stable. So we have a ton of unit testing running in each build. Uh, we have a continuous build box that uh, tests uh, documentation and uh, uh, building the packages and builds the night nightly builds and so on. We uh, code changes go through a manual code review, uh, any, any change that is big enough at least. Uh, and to, comp uh, to compound that, we also have automatic checks. So any pull request goes through a number of static code analyzers that look for bugs in the code. And we build uh, on both Linux and Windows and on Java 8 and Java 11. And we build the documentation and we build the packagings to make sure that every change is not breaking GeoServer. And we get all of these for free? Yeah. <laughs> so GeoServer is free. This is the top feature of the application. And it is a GPL license. So this means that you're getting uh, a free copy to use GeoServer. Uh, but also, if you're making any changes to GeoServer, we ask that you give those to your customers, your users, uh, under the GPL license. Uh, it is also free. You could download it um, for $0. This week's special is 10%, also $0. Um, doesn't that make you want to contribute? 
Um, if you can code and want to contribute, uh, there are guidelines in our GitHub uh, contributing MD. You need to sign a code contribution agreement to OSGO. Um, there's a couple options on how to contribute. If you have money and you want to donate a new feature, uh, our, we have a number of service providers, core contributors, experience providers, and so forth uh, that would be willing to help you. If you have money and you'd just like to make a donation, we are an OSGO project, um, so you can make a donation via, via PayPal. Um, and if you want to make a larger donation, uh, we can actually, uh, you can ask the OSGO treasurer to send you an invoice. Um, if you can't code and you don't have money and you still want to contribute, yes, please, we want to work with you. So this is a community project, uh, documentation improvements, tutorials, helping people on the users list, it all makes our community better and more welcoming. And also the hands-on development is not all coding. Uh, you can attend one of the monthly bug stomps and help confirm the fixes work. Uh, when we make release candidates, you can try them out with your data and tell us if it's uh, still working or if there's any regressions. And you can also help uh, have a look at what bugs have been uh, reported and make sure they can actually be reproduced. I think we're actually ending on time. Uh, are there any questions? I'm just going to ask you to wait until they've thrown a microphone at you. Okay. Hello. Yes, I uh, mentioned NetCDF, uh, which is uh, great, but um, uh, can you also read it via OpenDAP? No, only from local files, and they have to be CF compliant. It would be nice to, op uh, to read from uh, open, uh, OpenDAP as well, but as uh, Paul Ramsey once put it, in open source you get what everybody else paid for. So if anyone wants to sponsor it, we would be very glad to, to add that functionality. Here. Hi. Uh, you mentioned Mapbox GL styling. So it means I can copy my styling from from my Mapbox Studio and implement it inside the Geo server? Uh, yes. If you install the community module, it does support using the Mapbox style directly to, um, to configure the Geo server rendering engine and make those visuals. Um, as with any of the implementations of the Maxbox style specification, we don't uh, do like all the latest features. We, you know, we can't obviously do 3D spinning effects, uh, but yes, you can use it to configure a uh, layer group and so on. Yeah, the, the syntax is the one that was suppo supported by Mapbox like a couple of years ago, and uh, there haven't been updates, so it's a bit outdated. But m most of the basic styles actually come through fine. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you for the presentation. <clears throat> I've got a question with regards to styling and uh, SLD and CSS. Um, I, to my knowledge, uh, CSS is an extension, right? Or it is. Uh, do, do, are you considering putting, uh, making it a native language or? A, because LSD is such a blown up language, isn't it? <clears throat> so, uh, that's uh, sort of uh, asking people what editor they prefer, or what ID they prefer, or what operating system they prefer. Like, I use Windows, I, I feel the need to wash my hands. But uh, for many people, it's uh, totally fine. CSS, or YSLD, or Mapbox, they are all choices. And uh, I get people that. Uh, love one language and despise the other, so I don't think uh, any, any of those extensions will become core. Uh, native, uh, it's, well, CSS gets turned into SLD, Mapbox gets turned into SLD, YSLD gets turned into SLD. Everything converges back to SLD, so that's our rendering engine. Making a rendering engine dedicated to one language would be a very big effort and, I mean, if we had a ton of funding, we could do it, but... What is your preferred language uh, to I also uh, to just want to... 
So I just wanted to make a, I just wanted to make a note that GeoServer doesn't only support SLD. We've also extended it with a bunch of our own concepts and vendor options in order to better reflect the power of our rendering engine. So when you set things up in GeoServer, uh, it goes a little bit beyond what the SLD specification provides. We are not going to be held back by a specification that was last updated 10 years ago. Every time we have a new rendering need, we extend a bit, we push a bit the boundary of, of SLD and then update the other languages to support it as well. Uh, hello. Uh, about security and pluggability of uh, any uh, authentication provider, yes. Uh, as I know, uh, is, uh, is it GeoServer something backed by Spring Beans? Yes. Okay. Um, is it easy just to implement uh, and then add uh, what, what is needed is, for example, Spring Boot, you just need the, the, the your jar and a bunch of configuration. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, on, on GeoServer, the way of doing that is something like this, adding a jar so that GeoServer can discover an authentication provider. Or what, what kind? Because I see the UI, mm -hmm. it's not very uh, intuitive for me from, because I, I come from the back end of Spring mm -hmm. and having such a... a uh, not, it's not a limit at all. Uh, I'm just talking that I have a wall that is the UI, and uh, you know I don't want to rebuild. I just want uh, to configure. You, you have plug. to rebuild something because uh, your server uses Spring security, I know. but uh, it extends it. It wraps it. So you have to write some code to to extend it. You you can go and have a look at the auth to. Uh, community modules, yeah. which are extending Spring security, and they are kind of small. Instead of going to through main, which has everything, yeah. uh, that gives you a feeling of what you have to do in, in terms of supporting a new uh, a new security subsystem, a new authentication subsystem, and the like. It's gonna be a f four or five classes. Then yeah, it I depends. Know, I, I mean, if you also want GUI support, uh, you will have to make a GUI editor for it, and so on. So. Yeah. There's some work to do. It's not just yeah. Drop. It's not just declaring I, no. I don't know something like a full qualified class name no. and no, then no. say okay, I want that to be my authentication provider. No, th that's a very programming oriented uh, thing. Yeah. But the G server users are typically not developers, and uh, w that's why we provide a, a configurable, a runtime configurable yeah. thing. That that's the thing yeah. that makes things complicated, which is a runtime configuration. Yeah. Thank you. So Thanks a lot.